Using this cheap remedy every day can dramatically lower cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels, and it also protects your kidneys from the dangers of high blood pressure. Catherine from Double O Kini here. Welcome to our journey together to a better kidney health. What I want to show you in today's video are the three easiest changes that are scientifically proven to give you the greatest result in terms of improved kidney function. They will actually give you a tangible result the next time you do your blood works. As an added bonus, following the tips of today's video may also help you bringing back high potassium foods such as potatoes, bananas, mangoes and more. How is this possible? Let's see it, starting with number three, garlic supplements. When it comes to protecting your kidneys, taking the right garlic supplement can make all the difference in the world. The allicin in garlic can lower your blood pressure, lower your cholesterol, and lower your blood glucose levels. It's clear that these benefits combined can have a dramatic effect in slowing down the progression of CKD. And scientists confirm that. Yes, there are a ton of studies confirming that it works. Question, how can garlic repair your kidneys? Garlic has effects on blood pressure that are comparable or even better to those of some of the most commonly used antihypertension drugs. We are talking about reductions of 11 millimeters of mercury for the systolic and 5 for the diastolic. And since you cannot repair kidney damage without having your blood pressure and blood sugar levels under control, it's clear that you want to take garlic every day if you want to lower your creatinine levels. Now you may ask, why should I take garlic supplements when the pills my doctor prescribed are doing their job good enough? While antihypertension medications all have side effects, sometimes dangerous, garlic doesn't have any side effects for the kidneys. Did you know that the number one cause of high serum potassium levels in kidney disease patients is not kidney disease itself, but blood pressure medications? This is a condition called drug-induced hyperkalemia and it can literally kill you. On the other hand, if you use garlic and the other two easy ways to improve your kidney function I'll show you today, you will actually be able to decrease your need for blood pressure medications with great benefit for your kidney health. Just don't skip the next part of the video. I'll show you exactly how to find the perfect dose for this and other remedies. Now, you can also eat garlic fresh, but it has a couple of downsides. First of all, it causes bad breath and body odor, which can be dealt with, for example, by taking fresh garlic at the same time as a source of fats such as olive oil and also with some parsley. Parsley is rich in chlorophyll, a powerful natural deodorizer for the body. Yet, garlic is not the easiest thing to use. You will need to prepare it on a daily basis and it takes time. Also, as we have seen, you need ways to limit its side effect. Maybe an easier alternative is using odorless garlic supplements. A lot of people are using these supplements to keep their blood pressure in check and for their many other kidney protecting benefits. There are various garlic supplements to choose from. To find something that works, you will have to look at the label. First, to know how much allicin they contain. Now, this one I got here contains 2 mg of allicin per capsule, but there are many other brands. For example, a very good brand you can find in the US is Calic. This product has almost 4,000 reviews on Amazon.com and also it adheres to good manufacturing practices which should ensure your supplement is packaged and labeled properly. 
The aging process of the garlic also helps cut back on the strong garlic odor. Another brand you should be able to trust is Brit Nutrition. They also adhere a good manufacturing practices and they state on the label how much garlic extract equivalent the subjects contain. It's odorless garlic, so it shouldn't give you body odor problems. It's also a good idea to look for supplements that are enterically coated so they will dissolve in the intestine and not in the stomach. Dosages generally recommended in the literature for adults are 4 grams, 1 to 2 cloves of raw garlic per day. That's between 5 and 20 milligrams of allicin. Now, what you should know about these supplements is that they usually contain between 2 and 5 milligrams of allicin per serving. So you will just need to take one or two servings per day depending on what brand you're using. Some people take even more because it has no side effects besides lowering your blood pressure and cholesterol and blood glucose levels. Now to tailor sweet the dosage for you, follow the next tips of today's video. Ok guys, it's clear that you can actually use garlic to lower your creatinine levels and I know that many of you guys following me right now are already using this remedy. So let's talk about it. How are you taking garlic? What results did you get from it? How do you deal with its side effect? Let's talk about it in comment section. Now there is one thing even more powerful than odorless garlic peels that you don't even have to buy. Number 2. The Personal Health Journal As we have seen, there are remedies that help you lowering your blood pressure and blood glucose levels naturally and effectively. But keeping these levels down naturally is just half the equation. You will need your doctor to follow you in this process and give you the appropriate treatment based on your new, improved levels. But it's not always easy. Have you ever heard the phrase white coat syndrome? It's common for people to experience anxiety when they visit a medical office. This increased anxiety can ratchet up your blood pressure numbers. Yes, this is common. So common it even deserves a medical term. The Personal Health Journal is a great way to solve this and the other communication problems people may have with their doctors because when you start knowing more about your own health, you can make informed decisions, you can become your own health advocate and that's the way to start seeing changes. A health journal will help you keeping track of your blood pressure and blood glucose levels. Writing these two levels down is a great way to help your kidneys improve because you will know if what you're doing is working. It will make it a lot easier to stay on track. Writing things down provides a layer of accountability and a reason to stay on track. For example, if you want to eat less sodium, you may find it a lot easier to achieve this goal when you write down what you eat. And this will make your kidneys happy. A health journal will also help you notice patterns. If you occasionally get weird symptoms or maybe you have trouble sleeping or other issues, keeping a journal will help you notice factors that cause your symptoms and this will also help communicating with your doctor because now you have a detailed record from a medical standpoint. But most of all, it will be helpful for you to see objectively over time how changes made to your lifestyle have affected your kidney health and how it has improved. Now, to do this, you just need to download the Excel spreadsheet I personally use, which you can find down in the description. This is an Excel spreadsheet you can even customize to make it yours. It works so well because, for example, the effects of garlic are impressive when it comes to lowering your blood pressure. If you can leverage them to lower your need for medications, the results will be really incredible. And yes, that's how you can seriously lower your creatinine levels. 
Okay guys, today's video is all about the easiest way to get your kidney function back and lower your creatinine. Clearly, these three small lifestyle changes and home remedies are something every single kidney disease patient can benefit from, no matter the stage and the cause of the problem. Our number one is no exception. This remedy truly is a must for everyone with kidney problems. It won't just protect your kidneys and slow the progression of the disease. It will put back on the menu many high potassium items you never dreamed of eating again, especially if you also use the previous two entries of today's video. Yes, this one also fights high serum potassium levels. Number one is baking soda. Baking soda is extremely powerful, especially if you use it alongside the personal health journal. The reason is hyperkalemia or too high serum potassium levels, which is also the reason why many people with CKD cannot eat bananas, potatoes, avocados and other healthy but high in potassium fruits and veggies. There's also a way to take baking soda without nausea, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, question. How can baking soda lower serum potassium levels? While your doctor will never tell you this, current research is shifting the blame of high serum potassium levels in CKD from the diet of the patient and kidney disease itself to blood pressure lowering pills, as we have seen, and metabolic acidosis. Researchers studied three-day food diaries from 96 kidney problem sufferers who were not on dialysis. Special attention was paid to daily potassium intake of servings of fruits, vegetables, legumes, cereals, dairy, and meats. In doing so and looking at results, investigators could find no associations between dietary intake of potassium and high blood potassium levels. According to this research, lower serum bicarbonate levels put a kidney problem individual at greater risk of high potassium levels. Notice that bicarbonate is the same thing as baking soda because what's really causing high potassium levels or hyperkalemia is not the banana you ate, it's metabolic acidosis, which means that there's too much acidity in the blood. This is why baking soda is especially effective in lowering high blood potassium levels. It's worth mentioning that metabolic acidosis is also one of the most important causes of kidney damage. Baking soda can relieve acidosis because it is a base and it neutralizes acid in the blood, protecting the kidneys and potentially lowering your creatinine levels. So how much baking soda should you take? To answer this question, you need to be tested both for sodium bicarbonate levels and for serum potassium levels. The sodium bicarbonate test is especially important because it will let your doctor know how much baking soda you need exactly. Some people just take it and hope for the best. One gram three times per day with water is a common dosage. For sublingual administration, you just need to place the correct quantity of baking soda under your tongue and wait for it to dissolve. Again, consult your doctor to see if this is safe for you. Okay guys, as usual, let me know in comment section if you need any info or clarification. I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual, a new video is coming next Friday. I really hope to see you there. In the meantime, keep taking good care of your kidneys and be good to yourself. This is all for today. Thank you for watching.